I don't know what to say, really. They don't give us respect, but we about to take it today. Why? Because I want the best. You better check your reference. One inch at a time. You find out life's this game of inches. Now, what are you gonna do? I saw, saw, I saw. speak sports and mental health we use celebrities that you know to talk about the person that you didn't know i'm your host d brown hey it's your co-host over here dane not your average therapist you know how we do each and every weekend roll whistle like d said we talk about mental health we talk about sports and a little, little bit of everything in between yeah, yeah. Ships, current events you know everything encompasses mental health everything so you know it's it's a it's a common a conversation to have is one that we enjoy obviously and just to have uh just another outstanding guest come on board i mean i don't i don't see a better podcast with this type of focus in the united states and so i do know that man yeah we ain't check in in a while man yo like if, if i had to rate my my mental health right now one of the 10 10 best I would give it a good seven and a half, eight. You know, I'm I'm, I'm doing, you know, my regular grounding, my meditation, taking time with myself. Yeah. Number one priority, take time for yourself. It's okay to be alone. Too much of anything is a bad thing. But when I get in my space where I just want to be isolated about a day, don't answer the phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's good for me. I'm an introvert at heart, so I get recharged. Uh, being by myself. Yeah. So uh, I think I'm probably about a good seven to five, eight. You know, a, a lot of growing up, isolation or just to uh, separate yourself is seen as kind of bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you, you're too good. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Got that. So it's, it's, it's interesting that you kind of uh, speak on the self care piece. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what it is. That's really the appropriate term. Hey, if you don't want to go on. How we try to interpret yeah. it and say it, that, that's really the sabotage. <laughs> that's the sabotage though, because really, right. that's what it's about. Everyone should have an element of some sort of amount of self care. Yeah, absolutely. You know, self care comes in a variety of different ways. Yeah. It can be in journaling and writing, it can be in exercising, it can be in, in music, uh, music therapy, it could be in so many ways. Um, you know what I'm saying? Self care. Yeah. Uh, uh, vacation, sitting by the pool. Just it's it's all about it's not about the money spent or the extravagant mm -hmm. environment. Right. It's just really about being in a place where you settle with yourself. Yeah. And that everything that's happening in that moment is about you, not someone else or something. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's how you kind of recharge and get back to you know get back to you. Get back to you. Yeah. 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 It's all about that mindfulness, so those are the things that I do. Hey, what about you, man? Where, where are you at scaling one to ten? You know, what, what's, what's your, where are you at right now? Ooh, 
I'm uh, from one to ten. I have to rate it. I'm probably. I'm gonna use the old Kevin Samuel uh, <laughs> a little quote. We can't use. Hey, don't kill him. We, we can't use seven. Can't use the number seven. Right, right, so, right. I won't say that I'm an eight. Mm-hmm. I won't say that I'm an eight. I think that kind of gives a different view than a six. Mm-hmm. So I guess I have to because I, I omitted seven, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but six is also, it, it's still, you know, okay. It's so, good. It's natural. Slow. Um, You know, it's just, um, you know, everyday life. Right. You know, different roles that we play as, as, as men. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And on top of that, it's black men. Mm-hmm. As male therapists, as, as fathers, leaders in your community. And right. In respective fields and stuff like that. It's, uh, it can get challenging at times. Yeah. So talking about self care, you really, you know, I was talking to myself because there's something that I have to, um, you know, really concentrate on. Yeah. Um, you know, even you know, battles and things that I have, you know, those, you know, it's documented. You know, I've played six years, and did these great things, but part of that, um, it's just it's, it's a lot of the concussion headaches. Mm. You know, well, um, the, the mind issues that you have, the yeah. body, the body. Challenges are enormous. That you know, average person. I think Kyle even said it on one of our shows. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't even be able to get out of the bed. I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not trying to yeah. degrade someone, but just the average. I, I wouldn't think you know dealing with some of the issues that you know, I deal with you know, on a frequent basis. But um, I tell you, things are like this, and you know, this is this is self care. Mm-hmm. You know, really? being you know openly talk about and be transparent to have an open forum talk about just remember how I don't have to be talking about myself mm-hmm. but just be in the arena mm-hmm. you know it allows you to be in an environment of mindfulness to be in an environment of of, of the right type of thing yeah. you know you're empowering uh, you know men and women to to speak on something that has been told to us to uh, they not recognize yeah. not identify it. with it push it away that's mm-hmm. not that's not that's not my family. Yeah, you know, we don't need that. Right? Yeah, bull crap. We don't do that. Yeah, right. That's crap. I think everyone needs Wait to go to church. But yeah, that's that's what. You, yeah, that's 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 spiritual therapy. But yeah. that's what you're going there for. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, I'm, I'm at a six, but you know, I can doing things put like this at a six, but doing things to be an eight. Absolutely. So, you know, I won't stop at just I'm at a six. That's it. That's my reality. No. I have a reality, but I have, I have a motivation. I'm mm-hmm. at a six, but I'm working on things that could be at an eight. So, absolutely. Good stuff. Hey, what's your number today? What is your number? One comment below. You see this video. Where are you at today? Right now, in this moment, if you had to scale yourself one to 10, 10 being the best one, being the suckiest, where are you at? And are you mindful of that space that you're in? And are you actively doing something? to make it better. All right. Yeah. And so with this with this guy that we got coming on, I think, man, man. man really be enlightening for us as well as yeah. viewers. Hey, y'all don't know, but we know. We, we, we've already interviewed our, our guests already. And it was a dynamic interview. We hate that y'all missed that interview. Missed that one. Y'all missed that technical technical issues we got we got to deal with it this is what it is but you see it in the background the background that black and gold the terrible towel 12 years in that thing mr Saint louisiana Jean. himself yes sir woody man i mean he is uh has a great story of you know triumph termination yeah you know, not being uh product of your environment the product of your environment yeah uh, really has beat the odds, man. So, mm-hmm. man, looking for a great story from, from Mr. Ike Taylor, Mr. Super Bowl champion. Two times. Two times. Two times. Two Super Bowl times. Champion. Actually, I think he recorded an interception. I, I think so. The Super Bowl. So, we're talking about a playmaker. Hey, man. Yeah. Somebody who has a, a great heart for kids. Yeah. He has a great father to his son, either. Who's an outstanding athlete? I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys, college coaches, now if you're listening, you better go check him out. He's 
ninth grader, but what? If he can leave early. I know. Yep. He can't leave early in high school. Nah. But if he can leave early, if he could, he'd probably be leaving early. So check him out. Check him out. What? Yeah, man. Wow. It's a pedigree, though. He's like, what's his father? Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Very, very impactful, very energetic, you know, spokesman, advocate, um, sports head. Mm-hmm. You know, knows his sports, knows his people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, him being an analyst previously, you know, I see him on, on a lot of different podcasts, including his own. Um, you know, just talking about life in general, transition, everything we talk about here on Gold Whistle. How to deal with, you know, the current issues that we're dealing with, you know, in today's society, and how he's navigating it, you know, through his relationships, like you said, you know, family, you know, teammates, you know, all those good things. So it is what it is. But man, we appreciate you uh, coming on the show, man, and uh, obviously you were one of our highlights last season that the audience didn't get the chance to see, but. Uh, it was important that I had you come on. We were greatly appreciative of, of your time and effort, man, and what you what you stand for. And I just want to know, you know, with you being a New Orleans guy, right? Louisiana and everything going on there now, man. How is the, you know, first of all, how's the fam first and foremost? But then, you know, what is what is the, you know, what is the mentality and what's going on over there? What's in people's heads and how you feeling? Well, the fam is good, so thanks for asking. Uh, some in North Carolina, some in Houston. Some in Pensacola, some in Alabama. So far as like people staying, they kind of took heed in the mayor saying, man, you really need to get out. So, um, but some of my friends and my homeboys, they stayed, they got generators in their house. They boarded up their house. So, you know, when I talked to them, they said that the, the only thing that, that kind of scared them was the wind damage. It, won't, it wasn't the flooding, mm-hmm. it was the wind damage. So it was, the wind was taking the power out of, uh, out of outage, outage systems and uh, they couldn't take showers, so they had to go by somebody and take a shower. So other than that, um, that wind damage was a mother. But for the most part, as far as like safety-wise, everybody came out safe. So that's a good thing. You know, Blow the Whistle is about, about mental health and, and, and using um, sports figures to, to really uh, advocate for that uh, to, to, in an effort to get rid of the stigma. You know, you're, you are a 12-year Super Bowl champion. You have a great story, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later, but um, being in that industry and now being uh, you know, post-career, when we say mental health, what does that mean? Um, Mental health, for me, it just varies, depends on who you're talking to. For me, mental health is just facing adversity. You know, mental health is, is real, though, but it's, it's just overcoming. Sometimes the stage is too big for a lot of people, bro. And you start to see that now more and more with younger people. Um, for us, I feel like in our generations, and I was born in the 80s, man, mental health, man, you had to be mentally strong. So we kind of ran to adversity. You know what I'm saying? So when adversity came to us, it was like, all right, I'm built for this. You know, and, and it was the upbringing. At the time, it was the upbringing. But um, my upbringing wasn't good. But I enjoyed and I appreciate every single minute, every single second of it. You know, it, it made me to what I am today. So, yeah, I do. I do. I do agree that mental health is an issue. It just depends on who you talk to because you just never know what people have gone through in their life. You know what I'm saying? And some people just can't shake it. And there's some things you wouldn't expect for a person to kind of shake depending on what happened in their childhood or maybe adulthood or maybe teenagehood career. So it's, it's hard for people to let go. You know, some things are worse than others. But, you know, the ones who have had it happen to them and, and strive throughout it just because them the ones you kind of tip your head off to. And the ones who struggle with it, you just got to kind of have some understanding. Like, man, sometimes people just going to struggle with that thing forever. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to shape some kind of topics when you listen to people's stories, when you read about people's stories. It's like, maybe you or maybe I, Coach, or maybe y'all two, you know, can, can shake it off. And it might take a little while, but sometimes, man, people just don't shake it off at all. And that's the understanding part you have to have when you're dealing with people. All that's not the same. Right. Well, man, that, that's interesting that, you, that you, uh, you, you speak of that because you're right. We all are not the same, but what you're talking about is how we cope with it. Mm-hmm. And so you spoke of uh, how, you know, growing up, you didn't have, you know, it wasn't ideal. 
you know, a lot of our audience is gonna is gonna share this with 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 young athletes who who may not make it to where we made it, but are going through some of the journey right. that we're go- that, that we have to go through. And, and you talked about that growing up; it wasn't a good it wasn't a good uh, situation. What about it? What not necessarily I uh, in detail wasn't good, but ha- more importantly, how did you come up out of it? What resources did you use, or did you have any resources? What motivations did you have? Or did you have any resource? Was it a faith? What what was it to, to help you come out of that? That can help someone else that's listening. Be like, I, you know, let me try this too, so I can come out of my situation. Man, my resource was it was a village to raise one kid. That was my resource. So my mama gave my principal, my teacher, permission if I get out of line, go on and whip his ass. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not like today's where I feel like a lot of parents feel like their kids are always right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, nah, the adult is right first until the adult is proven wrong. Man, you have that permission. And I thank God my mama let my principal, my uh, teachers have that permission because it kind of made me stood in line. I was raised by a lot of women at the time. And, and just seeing how them women multitask, working two jobs, coming home, cooking, cleaning, making sure the house is taken care of, not having really a dad around. I had to appreciate that. I had to appreciate that because if the roles were reversed and we got to do what a woman do and let the woman go out to work, man, it's going to be hard as hell because we're really not no multitaskers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. just by DNA, you know? That's so right. I appreciated that from the get-go. I understand from that, understood that from the get-go. And my dad's RIP, my dad, his mom, she used to call me man. I said, Grandma, why you call me man? I was like five years old. She was like, because you got to be the man of the house. And I just took, I took a lot of pride in taking care of my sisters and my mom and doing that, whether it's my mom asking me to make sure the house was clean, uh, cooking sometimes, uh, running errands for her, because my mom, she didn't drive. She still to this day don't drive. So man, it, either we rode the bike or we walked, but sometimes, man, I just learned how to drive early. I was driving like 12 years old. And my homeboys and my aunties and my neighbors around the neighborhood, they let me drive. And the first car I learned how to drive was a stick shift. So it, it was like, man, I just had to grow up, but I ain't know no better. You know, that's, and that's what we was talking about last time. Like, when you just grow up in that kind of environment, you don't know it's a bad environment until you venture off. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Wow. And, and no, and thanks for saying that. Right, that's that's powerful. Um, and, and, and talking about just your upbringing, how, how did that upbringing and, and having that support system that that culture how did that drive you as far as like on the football field being athletic and motivated as you had you know that you were on the field how did that kind of help just your upbringing how did that how did that help you kind of be the person that you were on the field man i saw how i was living and i went to a few of my coaches house when i was playing baseball because um they was far enough but they had rides and my mom would let me stay at their crib and uh, I saw how they live. I said, damn, it's a different world. And uh, my mama said, she told me, my mom always told me this, she said, son, I don't think you you remember, but at eight years old, you said you was gonna make it to the league. And you said you was gonna make it to the league because your sisters and me are your, uh, are, are, are your drive to do it. Now, I don't know if you remember, and I didn't remember, but you know, every time I wake up to this day, you know, my sisters and my mom and my son, um, and my son's mom, you know, are, are, are my motivation on doing what I need to do. You know, like, I don't think people say, oh, you're taking care of too many people. Man, that feels good when a lot of people, you know, depending on you and you could hit other avenues that you can tap into and have some kind of source of income. So yeah, I like it. The people I'm taking care of are the people who've been with me since I was born, one or two, <laughs> have my son. And I know they're not in it for the money, they just in it for me. So yeah, I enjoy, I appreciate, I love every bit of it. So. Um, I think people fall victim and take care of other people outside of not only family, because I still do believe family ain't got to be blood. But at mm-hmm. the same time, if the, if the roles were reversed, uh, do you think them people would take care of you? And I've been in too many situations um, when I didn't have where these people have taken care of me. And it didn't have to be financially. It could be come pick me up from the store. So it could be like helping with schoolwork. But it was consistent. So um, every time I call, they pick up. So... That's why I was, man. I was just always driven and still is today to make sure I see a smile on my mom and my sisters and my and my son mom and, and my son face. Wow. 
man, you know, and, and to and to carry on with with that, and that, that's big up to to playing that role because uh, a lot of us would be, you know, very nervous to, to take on that responsibility. But as you say, no, I embrace it because I want to be able to take care of people that have been there who motivate me to be a better me every day. And you, and you even spoke of, and let's be honest, you even spoke of relationships that uh, our, our general world have issues with. You know, you're able to mend uh, relationships. You talked about being raised by just by just women, um, but I know personally, and you're about to share how great of a father you are to little Ivan, who is, as I told you guys in the intro, right? Is that that dude? If, right. if he had to, if he. If you could, I, this is what I told him, Mike. If you didn't have to stay four years of high school, he'll be early. Yeah, it, it, that dude, um, matter of fact, he's at a school, me and Coach D was coaching that right now, West Orange High School. And the dude just a damn dog. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I wasn't a dog at that age. I was a fighter at that age. Before I was like the football field, his IQ being a dog, seeing the play before it happened, diagnosing it and, and making a play. That's him freshman right now. So it's the reason why he's playing varsity as a freshman. And we all know that West Orange isn't a small school. It's in the highest A. It's in the 8A. And when you want to talk about 8A in Florida, that's one of the biggest things. That's one of the biggest schools you can go to. I remember West Orange at one point in time, man, they was holding 6,000 kids. You know, they cut it down. They had to build three more high schools around the area. And that's what it was. But my little dude, man, he just get it. Um, and I, and what I had to do was, he wasn't gonna ever have my lifestyle, but I had to put him around some dogs. So mm-hmm. I didn't seem that he was on at first until I started coaching. So I started recruiting some guys from outside the area who didn't have the same lifestyle as my son. And my son couldn't imagine, you know, somebody eating Roman noodles for dinner, somebody eating the eggs and rice for dinner, or somebody's shoes being a, a foot, a, a half an inch, small, they got to scrunch their foot in the cleats. Somebody wearing the same clothes for three or four days. He couldn't imagine, he couldn't see it until he actually saw it. Wow. And uh, it touched it touched his heart. And he was like, dang, dad, you know, he used to come home like, can we go get so-and-so some shoes? Can we go get so-and-so some cleats? And I'm like, hell yeah, like, okay, he finally get it. But at the same time, they was they was telling my son, I don't get into nothing, I let the coach, I let the players, pick who the captains are, because as coaches, it's a lot of daddy ball and it's a lot of favoritism. I don't do that. I let the players pick. So um, they kept picking my son. And I'm like, man, this okay. We got action. But during practice, during games, when it came down to clutch, and I used to tell my son, I said, look, man, your mom is white, your dad is black, your daddy played football, man. They're going to look at you off because of your color. I'm telling you, we call, we call y'all light-skinned boys kind of soft. And uh, from him, from what what off my what my son told me that stuck in his head, and he was like, "That'll never be me." And he said, "Dad, sometimes you just got the DNA." I said, "God damn!" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Man, ain't, got it. ain't got it. this one?" And uh, fast forward, you know, he he's starting. They play a pocket tonight, and uh, that all he want all he wants is contact. That's all he wants is contact. Uh, he just special to be around. Uh, my homeboy, Troy Palomalu, Ryan Clark, and my big homeboy from Pittsburgh, all of them came to see my son play. And uh, they thought I was his dad talking. I say, I say, fellas, y'all got to come check y'all nephew out. I'm telling y'all, this dude a little bit different. So they finally came down. And when they saw the dude play, they was like, Oh yeah, he's special. He mm-hmm. all special. It was like I we just thought you were talking that dad talk. We wind up seeing that young man play live in person. Like <laughs> this little dude, yeah. special. So um, I just feel good as a dad. I'm a proud dad when it comes down to having football, but I'm more proud of a dad because I can die today and he'll be good forever. And what I mean, good forever. He told me at 12 years old, like dad, the reason why you hard on me. You want to make sure I take care of my mom and my family and my kids and my generation. And I said, yes. I said, son, I can die right now because there's a lot of grown-ups that don't get that part. So he just made me feel like a proud, a proud dad in all aspects 
of his life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, no, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. He'll look you in the eyes, shake your hand, all that good stuff, all them good qualities that you he's caring. He cares about others, never about him. So he he just like I tell my son, mom, like he called both our good DNAs. I you know so. Um, I'm just very fortunate, very blessed about that part and my son. Wow. Man. Ooh. Listen, I, man, I know for certain I was there. He was in seventh grade training with the varsity team. He was still one of the most conditioned kids on the field. Seventh okay. grade. Yeah. Ooh. I was just waiting. So I had us playing. But I was just waiting. Right, I right, just... right. So, so I, was, it, was it more your son wanting to kind of emulate you and kind of be in your footsteps or you kind of allowed him to kind of choose? I, he, don't, he don't like when you say uh, Ike Taylor, son. He hate that. He said, my name is Ivan. Even though my name is Ivan, um, my middle name is Ike, he, he don't like when you, he want to create his own destiny. And I told, I said, man, there is no limit for you and what you can do. So every time somebody say, oh, that's Ike Taylor, son, that like put fuels in his fi fuel in his fire. He don't want him to so, that's, that's good for him to be motivated. He, he like his daddy in a lot of ways. Tell me what I can't do. And I'm going to prove your ass wrong. That's that's him right now. I'll probably be to here in the dirt just like his daddy. So that's what I'm happy about on that part. Absolutely. Wow. I'm a cigar connoisseur. So I still got to get one of those cigars, man. So tell us about that venture and what kind of brought that on for you. So, man, you know, I, I smoke a cigar every day. So... I kept going to, uh, they got a spot called Corona, which now our cigars are in 30, close to 40 stores, right. you know? So cigars just been taking off and it kind of happened over the pandemic. One of my homeboys, Howard, Howard G, the one I'm uh, I'm in business with, he was like, man, let's start our own cigar line. And I was like, man, well, I know nothing about cigars. Like I smoke them. I know it's a good cigar, but I know nothing about, about a cigar. I said, man, so you just gonna have to show me. So over the pandemic, man, I kind of studied like eight months worth of cigars. And he was like, bro, let's just come out with your cigar. He was like, you got a name for it? I said, my name is, we're gonna call it one of a kind. He was like, perfect. So I said, so what I need to do, man, when I want this cigar to be out, I want it to be my palate. It's something like drinking wine. So mm -hmm. he said, all right, cool. So I went through 40 cigars, bro. I went through 40 cigars. I narrowed it down to 10 of, of my liking and my palate. After 10, I narrowed it down to five. After five, I narrowed it down to two. And I said, this is the cigar I want right here. So it took me about almost a year just to come up with this cigar. But for me, I was just impressed on going down to Nicaragua. So it's 80% Nicaraguan. You know, it's 20% right. Lancaster PA, in which people don't know Lancaster PA have some great tobacco. And it's wrapped in a Sumatra because I like my Sumatra. So I'm, I'm an Adam Bay guy. So I wanted, I wanted to have something similar to that. So, man, just studying and, and just tapping into the cigar world. I didn't know the cigar world, man, was this big, to be honest with you. Like, me and my homeboy, man, after September the 18th, we got like a whole cigar tour and everybody wanted our line of products. So, man, wow. I just fortunate. I tapped into it, wasn't expecting this, but it took off, though. So, so what is it about this, your, your favorite one that, that was in your top two, the, the final decision that you made? What what was it about that one? What was the, you said the taste, you're a connoisseur, I would say. So what was what was about, what distinguished uh, traits did it have from the other, what, 39 that you that you did choose? You know, some some cigars are stronger than others. So cigars like drinking wine, like you, if you drink red wine, you drink a Pinot in the morning, you drink a Cab at noon, you drink a Marlowe in the evening. So you go from light, medium to bold. Same thing with cigars. You go from light, medium to bold. So I, my palate isn't really a bold kind of guy. I like that light to medium kind of smoke. So that's when I came up with them two tobaccos. I was like, man, this is this is it right here. And the wrap has something similar to do with it too. Like the darker the wrap, I wouldn't say pretty much the stronger the cigar, but it does like give it some kind of pop or flavor. So that's when I came with the Sumatra wrap because I saw the other beans was kind of wrapped like the Sumatra. So I said, man, that's that, that's easy for me. So, man, I've just been tapping into this cigar world, man. This It's been crazy, coach. <laughs> Good stuff. I told you, bro. I told you. Man, listen here. Tell me. Let, let's talk. Let's have a little fun before we get out of here. Okay. 
Who who is the one guy? Talk, we talking about mentality, okay? <laughs> who is the one? Who, who is a guy or, or a scene or a play or you guys were one of the best defensive oh, fronts sorry. units in the history? Tell me what was the mentality? Who was a, a team or a person that you you knew? by your level of play or your mentality that you could change theirs and that you did change theirs, you know, and you, you saw that. Um, I don't know about change. I say when we played Baltimore, when we played the Baltimore Ravens, we kind of looked ourselves in the mirror at the time because mm -hmm. their personality, their blueprint was the same as, same as ours. Find some guys on defense who don't have no breaks to the car find some guys on offense who are filthy and nasty, low down and dirty. When it came down to offensive line, all they want to do is smash faces. Find a running back that I don't mind running people over every time they get the ball, regardless of who he can score or not. And find a defensive coordinator who's pretty damn good. So that's how that's how it was when it came to team-wise when we played Baltimore. As far as like a person, I would say Steve Smith Sr. You know, that little pit boy, you know, his, his height made him kind of itchy. You know, he always... <laughs> Regardless on his height, it was him against the world. So as far as like going against Steve, I think him and I had the same personality. I uh, mean, we all always got some, you know, me from draft pick. Um, was told all I was, was told all I was, all I was going to be was a special teams person. You know, so I was going to last in the league two years, maybe. Steve Smith, you know, let's, Juco, let's get it. played let's, better. Let's, let's get it clear. Let's get it clear. I right? we, we had one report. This was the worst pick in, in yeah. history. That's what I'm talking about. He should, he should be fired. Yeah. That was, that was, that was, and I still, still today got what that person said. I don't even like to say his name because he don't want nothing. But anyway. Um, no, we won't, we won't say his name either. Yeah, yeah but when he, you know, I, I, at the time I had that on my refrigerator when he said, and I just, I just walked past that thing every day like, man, this dude tripping. So, um, other than that, but Steve Smith Sr., man. Steve Smith have always had that little man syndrome. Shout out to him. Yeah. Man, well, well I oh, definitely, man. It's, it's always a pleasure, man. Glad to have you. Glad you was able to come back on the show. You know, let the people hear you uh, for the second time. Their first time, but our second time. You know, having a good conversation. I appreciate you showing up and showing out like you always do. Man, go get the cigars. Yes. Hey, so, hey, hey, check it out. Once y'all mm -hmm. go to, so you can catch them at howardgcigars.com. On Instagram, you can catch it at Howard G Cigars. Check out the one of a kind. We got a nice little line of cigars. Man, they taking off. So whenever you want a good smoke, whether it's the morning or, or noon, go ahead and try one of mine, that one of a kind. Whenever you want a little, a bolder smoke, from noon to the time you fall asleep, go ahead and get that black Moses. That's my homeboy cigar right there. Okay. So, I right, what's the best cocktail, cognac, drink, wine, whatever to go with the one of a kind? Man, you can drink that. Uh, yesterday I had that Louis the Thirteenth with that one of a kind, but it might hit your pocket too much. So, man, you can go ahead and drink that Austin Hope. It's a red Cabernet wine. It's called Austin Hope out of Paso Robles, California. And that makes real good with that uh, one of a kind cigar. You heard it yeah. here first, ladies. Heard it here first. I will definitely be copping. Absolutely. Order it now. Order it now. now. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, we appreciate you, boss, man. You know, I know you're busy, man. You got things to do, man. God bless you for your heart, man. Your patience for the role that you play as a leader in your community. For being, you know, transparent in how you are as a, as a father and, and, a, and, a, and a provider for your family. Just thank you for being a motivation to us in the audience, man. Keep doing your thing, man, and walking in walking in purpose. Man, I appreciate y'all boys inviting me to the show. Uh, Coach D, will I see you down the line on the field? So, on, uh, man, this thing get over. Don't even trip. Yeah, don't even know. It's a reunite, re, re, reunion coming. You know it. One hundred percent. Absolutely. All right, boss. All right, All right. thank y'all. Appreciate it. Hey, me. Y'all got to stay tuned. You Every week. To. Every week. But seriously, go get the uh, the one of the kind of cigars. Yeah. If you're, if you're yeah, sure like, advice, you know. Um, yeah, that's been kind of like my thing. Like, over the past probably about two years, I've really been like, 
that's my thing. Like at the end of the day, give me a good cigar, I'm good. Don't inhale. No. No moderation. Well. Everything moderation. Everything in moderation. Go to what's it's a nice little red cabinet. Two dope therapists. Talking about mental health. Mind strong. Mind strong. And it don't mean that you don't feel when you're strong. Yeah. Yeah. You feel it. Question is, what do you do with it? How do you cope? How do you feel? Like, you like that close up. You like that close up. <laughs>